Good morning. I'm Professor Sever. Today we're starting Notebook 2 on our subject linear algebra, and we're still continuing with linear equations and linear systems, and Notebook 2 will emphasize row reduction. So let's begin. So first we have some definitions. A non-zero row in a matrix is simply a row that is not all zeros, namely a row that does not consist of all zeros. A leading entry in a non-zero row is the leftmost entry in that row. So you can see in the first row, it's not a zero row because not every entry is zero, and the entry in the 1, 1 position is the leading entry in that row. In row 3, the leading entry is in the 3, 2 position, namely it's the number 3 right here. So in this matrix, since we have three non-zero rows, we have three leading entries. Now, a matrix is in echelon form if it meets the following criteria. So officially, we would say it's in row echelon form, but the abbreviated term is just echelon form. So a matrix is in echelon form if it has all three of the following properties. All non-zero rows are above any rows that are not zero, which means the zero rows need to be at the bottom. Each leading entry of a row is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the row above it, if there is a row above it. And the third criterion is all entries in a column below a leading entry are zeros. And so we can see by this definition, this matrix is not in echelon form. Why? Because look at, at this leading entry in the first row, first column, the leading entry in the second row first column by our condition b here it would say the leading entry of the second row would have to be in a column to the right of the leading entry in the first row so this leading entry does not match the second criterion there are no zero rows so part a is true vacuously and part c doesn't hold either because here's a leading entry in the first row and the entries below it are not all zero which of course is partly why this leading entry is in the wrong position, as we already said. Let's look at the second matrix. Now, is this matrix in row echelon form? The answer is yes. We have three leading entries in the 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 5 positions. There are no zero rows, so part A checks out. And the leading entry in this row is in a column to the right of the row above it. The leading entry in the third row is in a column to the right. It's actually three columns to the right of the, of the leading entry in the row above it. All the entries below the leading entries are zero, which would be these two and this one. So this matrix is in echelon form. Let's look at this one. I think we can see immediately that the zero row is not at the bottom. So this matrix is not in echelon form. Okay. would take us one step of doing a row interchange to put it in echelon form, but that's not the question. We're considering whether these are in echelon form or not. And is this matrix in an echelon form? Yes, in fact, this is the last matrix where we did the row interchange. So we can see this matrix is in echelon form. We have zeros below the leading entries. That's our third con condition. Each leading entry is in a column to the right of the leading entry of the row above it. We have that condition, and, there are, and the zero rows are all at the bottom. So again, this one is in echelon form. Okay, now reduced echelon form. So we can go further. Okay, so first, um, a matrix is in row reduced echelon form, or simply reduced echelon form, if it's first in echelon form and satisfies the following two conditions. Each leading entry is a 1, and then each leading entry is the only non-zero entry in its column. Another way to say this part is that the entries above the leading entries have to be 0, if there are any. So this, that we can clearly see this matrix is not in reduced echelon form. This leading entry is not a 1, okay? And it would meet the other, the other two criteria. It is in echelon form, but this is not a 1. The 1, 1 entry is not a 1, as prescribed by Part D or Condition D. Therefore, the matrix is not in row-reduced echelon form. 
And now we see this matrix is really, it's the last matrix if you apply to type a scaling operation, if you multiply row one by three. So now we see this matrix is in reduced echelon form because it satisfies all the criteria. The leading entries are ones and the entries above the leading entries are zero. So in the echelon phase, we call it the forward phase, you clear out below the leading entries, you put zeros below the leading entries. And in the backward phase for reduced echelon form, you put zeros above the leading. And of course, the leading entries need to be one. Otherwise, if they weren't, it wouldn't be unique. And we'll see in a coming theorem that the reduced echelon form is unique. So is this matrix in reduced echelon form? Of course not. It's not in echelon form. The zero rows are not at the bottom. Now, if we did a row change on that previous matrix, is it now in reduced echelon form? And the answer is yes. It's in echelon form, and it's reduced. The leading entries in the 1, 1, the 2, 3, and 3, 5 positions are 1s. We have cleared the values above. We have zeros above. And of course, that is achieved through row reduction. Now, this is the interesting part of this example, why I put it in. The leading entries don't have to be right in adjacent columns. So if you have a column of zeros, then the leading entry will be in a column somewhere to the right of it, unless all the columns are zeros, of course. And that's what we have here. So this is a good example. This matrix is in reduced echelon form. Another example. Is this matrix? And the answer is yes. Can you have a, an initial column of zeros? The answer is yes. So first, is it in echelon form? Yes, it is. We have zeros below the leading entries. So it's in echelon form. Do we have zeros above the leading entries? Yes. Are all the leading entries one? They are. This matrix is, in fact, in reduced echelon form. Okay, let's consider an example. Now, how do we put a matrix in echelon form? Okay, we do, of course, we do that through the process of row reduction. So let's work an example. We will continue this example in part two of Notebook 2 Row Reduction. I hope you enjoyed part one in this series. Please look forward to the continuation in part two. I'm Professor Sever. Thank you.